Hello and welcome to this assignment walkthrough video for the DHIS2 curriculum developed by Logical Outcomes. My name is Nicholas Santillo and in this video I'm joined by Sarah Godden and together we look at how to enter data into tracker capture programs in DHIS2. Okay, I'm here again with Sarah. Hey Sarah, how's it going? It's going great, Nicholas. How are you? Good, thank you. And in this video we're going to look at how to enter data for tracker capture, yeah? Yes. So right. as you can see, I've got the uh, Tracker Capture app highlighted here. Mm -hmm. And when I click on it, the first thing you need to do is pick where. So I know that my Tracker Capture program is assigned to Toronto schools. So I can click through my hierarchy. Now, as soon as I pick the level that there's a program assigned to it, it'll become available here on the dropdown. Mm. So let's try Teacher Program. Okay. Um, but what I want to do, if I had uh, people registered already, they would appear uh, by clicking this search. But I don't have anyone, so we need to register a person for this program. Okay. So this is kind of a two-step data entry. So first you register people, and then you actually fill out the form or the stages that come later. Mm. So right now, all we need to um, fill in is a person's name and an age. And by clicking Save and Continue, it continues me into the next stage for this program, for this person. Okay. If I were to pick save and add new, what it would do is it would just enroll this one person and then allow me to enroll another. And I could just keep enrolling many people and then I could do the actual stage later. Okay. Um, so for this case, I'm going to click save and continue. And then what's going to happen is I'm going to be pulled into the person's dashboard, their tracker dashboard that we've just mm -hmm. created. So you'll notice on the side we've got a profile widget We've got mm -hmm. information about when they were enrolled. But the important part here is you'll see data entry. So this is actually the program that we set up in a previous video. Mm -hmm. And if I click once, um, I can start filling it out. So the report date, let's just pick it's today. And these are my questions. Now these are set up as radio buttons. So they're a little bit um, off balance, but on the phone they look nice. Or if you were to pick the drop down option, you could mm -hmm. do that as well. So we only have two questions here pretty straightforward and what I would want to do is pick complete when I'm finished I'll get a uh, verification and then you'll notice the box turned green so mm -hmm. anytime I want to come back to this person person name I was very creative there mm -hmm. anytime I want to look at person names record I can just click once on this completed box yeah. and it'll open up their answers okay. which is nice so so let's say we're done here and I'm gonna go back so now if I search just a, oh, let's try a blank search. Um, okay, mm -hmm. so then I can see the person here. Similar to how we did with the event capture, let's show or hide columns. Um, so we have most of our, now these are attributes that we set up. So we mm -hmm. have our two attributes showing right away. And again, you can use these arrows to kind of organize the order of which things appear. Mm -hmm. um, one other thing that's very important for trackers to understand these buttons here. Okay. So anyone will appear, everyone will appear under this kind of list feature. Mm -hmm. So the next three, if they're active, if they're completed, or if they're canceled. Mm -hmm. So people who are canceled, it used to be called terminated, um, wow. they will not show up in reports. So say you're testing and you're making some pretend people. Mm -hmm. So long as you cancel them, they're not going to appear in your reports. Okay. So let's just take a quick peek at a person. You'll notice for the enrollment widget, I can mm -hmm. cancel them. Ah. Okay. So right now this person is active, which means you know the program's still running. So mm -hmm. the program is happening now. If the program were to end in, say, one month, I could come back in one month and I could say complete. Mm -hmm. and then the person's completed. I can still pull reports on a complete person, mm. but I cannot, again, pull reports on someone whose enrollment's been canceled. Interesting. Yeah, so you can kind of use those buttons to kind of go back and forth um, to see, okay, who's active in the program, who's finished the program, and then these people are... It's kind of like you're ignoring those who have been canceled because you're right. not going to report on them. There isn't a way to delete people, so ah. the canceling is how you kind of get them off your radar. Okay, but it is good for mm -hmm. auditing because you can make sure you can keep track of people even if they've quote unquote been deleted from mm -hmm. reporting. Yeah. 
Cool. Yeah, so I think that's a good uh, introduction to how you both uh, register a person uh -huh. and then fill out a, d a data entry form for them. Yeah. Um, and then the next step is, depending on what you want to report, you might go to um, a pivot table. Mm -hmm. You might create a program indicator, and then you can use the data visualizer. Um, but we'll cover that in a future video. Definitely. Okay, thanks. I think that that's a good overview. Thanks, Sarah. I think we're, we're good for now. That's all for now. As always, you can get in touch with us at info at logicaloutcomes.net or on our YouTube channel, Logical 